Well, I have a prophetic word this week for you, and I think this is really um, going to help shape your expectation and hope for what God's doing. And I think many people are being appointed right now in the kingdom work that's really never been done before. And some of that's because there's industries that exist that have never existed before, like Bitcoin or like online tech, things like virtual reality. There's new social medias. We have new AI interfaces. So there is that kind of new. But there's also understandings over agriculture and water and um, and, and so we have environmental concerns that Christians are being appointed to in the kingdom to bring resolutions, not just from a ministry place, from, but from a governmental place. There's Christians who are being appointed into politics like never before. We've seen more people move into politics with a Christian foundation, believing that God wants to change things uh, for, like never before. And we're, we're seeing that God's doing something new, that he's activating people in a unique way. And we're hearing those stories and we're hearing people say, God's sending me here like never before. It's being called by some Christian nationalism. I don't think that's what it is. I think God's just showing us that the kingdom of heaven is supposed to affect every aspect of society. God created humanity to rule and reign. God created us from the garden to have a job, to, to nurture what's going on in the world. And we should care about things like environmental environmentalism, education, politics. And God's allowing a new release of understanding for different people who are being positioned. And we're gonna hear stories from the most powerful places of, of society, whether it's an aviation or, or transportation or environmentalism or agriculture, we're going to hit, see Christians have been appointed. God sent people and is commissioning people into places to be a loud voice, to bring great change, not only to be a loud Christian voice about kingdom, but also to be a loud voice of change in a lot of areas that haven't moved forward in sometimes decades. And God's, you know, has a scripture about this in Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. That's a prototype for now. It says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So a lot of you who've had a kind of a negative perception on the earth right now, like, can it get better? It's like, so there's so much bad. Like maybe you've gone down one of the conspiracy rabbit holes that maybe have now played out to be true or some of the conspiracies that aren't true. And so it's hard to live in hope, but God's doing something new and he's doing something fresh because although God's never new, he's always the same. He does new things. He keeps creating. He one-ups himself. And we're going to see him one-up himself in this generation. So you don't want to wear a t-shirt that says, I've already been there. I've seen what God can do. I've seen the best of. I've, you know, I've seen what revival looks like. I've seen what transformation looks like. I've seen what God can do in lives. I've seen it. It's, you know, like you can't be that person right now, but you want to understand that God's doing something that you haven't seen, that no matter how mature you are in God or no matter how new you are in God, God's always going to be doing something that's different that you haven't seen before. And God's positioning Christians all over the world in careers and roles and spaces and authority that the church itself at large hasn't even seen before. There's going to be harvests and purposes in these spaces that's going to cause the church at large to really grow in advance because of individuals being willing to do things that have never been done before. Some of you have felt like, man, I have a specific calling in my life that feels special or unique. And it's because it is. It's, I mean, a lot of other generations might have felt that. People 30 or 40 years might have even felt that in their generation of that time. But there wasn't a whole lot new moving around us. But right now, so many industries are being made new by technology, by new ideas, by new science, by globalization of education. We're seeing so much advancement like we've never seen before. It's like the whole world's 100xing into the future. And there's also a lot of corruption in the midst of that. And God's raising people up like you and I to be able to speak, to be able to be witnesses, to be able to be in the middle of, to be the scientists, to be the engineers, to be the agriculturalists. And we can see this in the rise of technologies. There's inventions that no other generation has ever dreamed of or had access to. I feel like we're living in a time that you know is beyond the Jetsons right now. It's, it's so crazy how fast we're getting there. And I, I get to dream with God over these technologies. I don't have to be afraid of them. I get to dream. Like that's how God wants to put in your heart a position of faith over the technologies that before some of the technologies are used for the Antichrist, because there's a lot of websites out there, Bible scholars who are saying, you know, the end time scholars who are saying, don't, you know, engage AI or don't engage this or don't engage that because you are bowing to a one world system. It's not true. You are going to be using technology to bring a harvest until it's being used by a one world system or until it's violating your faith. You get to use social media platforms. You get to use AI technology. You get to use augmented reality. You get to use all, all kinds of incredible devices and, and equipment that's out there. And I think of Martin Luther wanting to translate the Bible into modern language. And at the same time, just 100 years before, but really in his generation, the printing press became front and center, something that was happening where people were getting literate 
And the printing press was invented for such a time as Martin Luther's day, where he released the Bible into common tongue and distributed something that could not have been done in any other generation before his. It was just then at a place that they could mass print such a large book and, and a quantity that he wanted to bring where everybody could have access to read the Bible for themselves. Well, we're in that kind of Martin Luther Reformation time where God's reforming in some ways the way we think about Christianity and how Christianity can impact the world around us and how God's love and Jesus's face could be on things that we would have never seen him without that. So some of what we will be bringing in the great harvest of Jesus will come because you are following God in a new position that previous generations of Christians have never seen before. Think about the virtual harvest where people get saved online in spaces that we don't even have to set foot in. Think about climate anxiety that the younger generation is facing. Many Christians don't believe in it or believe it's just political or construct. And yet God has technologies and solutions that can be brought through scientists, climate entrepreneurs, and Christians who will be positioned not just to protest, but to bring sustainable change that may be outside the current conversations that are happening right now. Many Christians are going to be invited to the table of world forums over issues to be voices and really carry authority that previous Christians didn't even consider our kingdom responsibility because God's raising up unlikely people right now with wisdom and solutions, practical solutions. There's been a refining happening for many Christians who are called to these new spaces. Some of you might have been experiencing it because God's been putting you on a narrow path. He's been lifting grace and, and lifting the, the ability to do other things off of you to where things haven't been successful that aren't in your lane. God's been building a deeply rooted character in many people who are watching right now. And there's a sense of holiness that you can't, you as you go into these spaces, you're, you're not going to be polluted because you've been in this track of such a kind of a narrow lane. I, I, I joke around and say, God has me on a tight leash. What's okay for someone else isn't okay for me because he's, he's leading me in a trajectory that I have to be on that leash. I have to be near him. I have to be close to him. And so I don't have permission to do things that even some other Christians do. That they're, All things are permissible, but are they necessary? And so I've, I've been on a tighter leash than a lot of people. I know many of you have too, because God wants to, to bring a kingdom atmosphere and a kingdom perspective. So it means we don't have the same permissions to just be frivolous. You know, many Christians have abdicated whole industries, not feeling like it's our responsibility. And yet we're seeing some of the greatest kingdom works in these exact places. And we're going to see them even more visibly. We're seeing even TV shows like the chosen becoming the most watched TV show in the world right now. We're seeing people like Jordan Peterson fighting for freedom of speech against a country that's, you know, he's bringing lights of the evils of socialism. Like no one ever has before. We're going to see more and more people raised up for such a time as this, even though things may feel dire, that's when God raises up champions and people to bring solutions. Joshua one nine says that when, you know, when Joshua is afraid, he doesn't want to go to the promised land. God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid that you've never seen this land before this way. Or don't be afraid of the giants or the land. Don't be afraid of the people who are occupying it, but be strong and of good courage because I am with you. And that's what we have to feel right now that God's sending us to places again, that aren't common for Christians to go. And you need to believe that Joshua one night that God's sending you to don't be afraid, but go into these lands because these are lands of promise for Jesus to reap his inheritance, to reap his reward. And we need you in these new spaces. We need scientists. We need entertainers. We need educators. We need NGO leaders. We need the politicians. We need the civil rights leaders. There's a new space for you that God's prepared for you. And think about Martin Luther King, which we just celebrated his birthday last week. Think about you know Martin Luther King Jr. and how if he hadn't risen up as a minister into the main stage political forum and shared a dream from God that united us around a new civil rights understanding we would have been, we, we might have still been 20 years behind now. We might have been so far behind because God, we, we weren't, one man wasn't willing to be obedient to go into the stage that not many people saw as a kingdom occupation. Well, God's raising you up too, and he's doing a new thing. So I want to encourage you, tell us in the notes, in the comments, for those of you watching on YouTube or Facebook Live, tell us what the new thing is for you. Tell us what you're working on. We want to pray with you and believe with you that God's going to do something that maybe the world's just never seen, and it's through someone just like you. So I'm excited about that.